Hello, Huachong students. Welcome to home-based learning. I am Mr. Kelvin Tan. I am here to teach you how to show tax incidents using the supply and demand framework. Okay. First, you draw the normal supply and demand curve, the axis. Okay. Label the axis price and quantity. Okay, you draw a normal upward sloping supply curve and a normal downward sloping demand curve. Before you do anything else, uh, you be, before you shift any curve, it's a good habit to always take note of the original equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. So going by this, this let's call it P, P star and Q star. Okay, so P star and Q star will denote the original equilibrium price and quantity. With this, we can now impose a specific tax. Now, what a specific tax does is to tax the good at a certain price per unit. So for this case, right, uh, let's say the specific tax is X dollars per unit of good. Now, what a specific tax does is to shift the supply curve up in a parallel manner. Now, why does the supply curve shift up? Basically, uh, you are imposing the specific tax on the firm. So, this tax will increase the cost of their production. Okay, so we shift the parallel line up. Let's call it S T. This is the supply curve after you impose a specific tax. The vertical distance between these two supply curves is actually the X dollars per unit. Now, the first thing to know is, of, of course, where does this new supply curve after the tax cuts the original demand curve? You can see it's given by here. Okay, this will be called P, C, and Q. That's called QT. Now, what this P, PC says is basically the price that consumers are facing after the government imposed the tax of X dollar per unit. Is PC also the price that the firms get? Okay, that will not be true because after the consumers pay PC, somebody must hand over the tax to the government. The easiest way to find out how uh, the, the price that the firms get after the tax is to take note of this point, okay, the vertical line down where it touches the O supply curve. The price that you read off the Y axis is the price that the firm receive after the tax. So what does this mean? This means that while consumers are paying PC, okay, firms are receiving only PF. Again, where this distance here is the specific tax per unit X dollar. Now, the next step is to indicate uh, where the tax incidence is. Okay, it's very easy to do once you take note of all the different prices on the Y axis. So the tax that the consumer have to pay is simply the difference between P star and P C. So you can see right this. Okay, let's let me de denote this as T C. Okay, this is the specific tax that is uh, imposed, that, is, that the consumers are responsible to pay for. And the same way, the specific tax that the firms are responsible for is the difference between P star and PF. So the, the distance between these two, TF, is the specific tax incidence that is, uh, the firms are responsible for. Now, we, we know that OQT uh, is the amount that is sold after the tax. So to get the tax burden to the consumers is simply T, TC multiplied by OQT. Okay, so if I were to change into a highlighter, okay, this area is the total tax uh, that's paid to the government by the consumer. So to repeat again, it's basically TC multiplied by the amount sold after the tax, which is OQT. Now, as for the tax that is, uh, the producers are paying, okay, it's basically TF multiplied by OQT. Let me change to a different color, which is this amount. Okay. 
Okay, so the green area represents the burden of the tax that falls on the producers. Okay, producers. So the way to check is that the, the sum of the yellow area and the green area must be the total tax revenue that's received by the government, which is the X dollars multiplied by the amount of OQT. Okay, so in this illustration, this is what it shows. How do you illustrate the tax incidence to the various parties after you impose a specific tax? Thank you.